हेलो एवरीवन लास्ट टाइम वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट फर्स्ट चैप्टर मेटल अलॉय नाउ सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट चैप्टर इज सीमेंट एंड रिफ्रैक्टरीज डेफिनेशन ऑफ सीमेंट सीमेंट इज द फाइनली ग्राउंड मिक्सचर ऑफ कैल्शियम एल्यूमिनेट एंड सिलिकेट ऑफ वेरिंग कॉम्पोजिशन विच हाइड्रेट्स वेन मिक्स विथ वॉटर टू फॉर्म रिजिड कंटिन्यूस स्ट्रक्चर विच इज हैविंग गुड कॉम्प्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ नाउ नेक्स्ट इज पोर्टलैंड सीमेंट पोर्टलैंड सीमेंट इट इज also a grayish cement which contain calcium aluminate and calcium silicate of varying composition with small quantity of gypsum and which is capable of setting and hardening to form concrete portland cement is most important cement because it is used in rcc structures now let us see the average percentage composition of portland cement portland cement contain mainly lime silica alumina iron oxide magnesia sulfur trioxide soda and potash and last compound is gypsum that is calcium sulfate the percentage of lime in portland cement is 60 to 67 silica 17 to 25 alumina 3 to 8 percent iron oxide 0.5 to 6 magnesia 0.1 to 4 then sulfur trioxide 1 to 2% soda and potash 0.5 to 1.3 and gypsum that is calcium sulfate is 3 to 4% now see average compound composition in portland cement portland cement contain seven compounds first one is dicalcium silicate second tricalcium silicate third tricalcium aluminate fourth tetra calcium alumino ferrite fifth calcium sulfate sixth calcium oxide and seventh magnesium oxide the setting time for each of these component is for dicalcium silicate it is 28 days for tricalcium silicate 7 days for tricalcium aluminate 1 day and for tetra calcium aluminum ferrite 1 day now let us see functions of ingredient that is constituent of cement first constituent of cement is lime that is calcium oxide if calcium oxide is present in excess it causes cement unsound and cement get expanded if lime is present in deficiency strength of cement decreases and cement set quickly second constituent is silica that is sio2 it gives strength to the cement due to formation of dicalcium and tricalcium silicate third constituent is alumina that is al2o3 it gives quick setting property to cement it is act as flux but if it is present in excess it weakens the cement fourth constituent is iron oxide that is fe2o3 it gives gray color to the cement also it gives hardness and strength to the cement next constituent is calcium sulfate that is caso4 it is also known as gypsum it increases initial setting of cement last constituent is magnesia that is magnesium oxide it gives hardness to the cement high content of magnesia makes cement unsound now next is mortar it is the mixture of cement or lime and sand in water when cement is used as binding material then it is called as cement mortar when lime is used as binding material then it is called as lime mortar now next is concrete concrete it is mixture of cement or lime sand and coarse aggregate with water when lime is used as binding material then it is known as lime concrete when cement is used as binding material then it is known as cement concrete now next one is bio cement it is self healing material to enhance durability of building structure and conservation of cultural heritage now let us see about lime lime that is calcium oxide it is obtained from calcium carbonate when calcium carbonate is heated it is converted into calcium oxide that is lime and there is evolution of carbon dioxide gas now next is quick lime 
it is obtained when limestone is heated at 1200 degrees celsius then that lime is known as quick lime properties of quick lime are it is white amorphous or crystalline solid its melting point is 260 degrees celsius it is highly stable it react with acid to give calcium salt uses of quick lime are in the manufacturing of paper steel and cement in manufacturing of soap varnish and lime bricks it is also used for medical purpose insecticide for plants and animal it is also used for water softening and recovery of ammonia second type of lime is slack lime when Calcium oxide is mixed with water. There is formation of calcium hydroxide which is known as slack lime. Properties of slack lime are on heating it decomposes to calcium oxide and water. In water it forms milk of lime. Uses of slack lime are in paper industry for production of NOH, white wash, tar and plaster, in sewage treatment and in petrol refining. Now third type of lime is hydrated lime. Quick lime in turn can be reacted with water to produce hydrated lime that is calcium hydroxide. Properties of hydrated lime, it is easy to handle, it can be used with less danger, uses in production of sugar from sugar cane and sucrose that is crude juice, in pH control in cobalt production it is also used in cement and sand to create mortar it reduces cracking of exterior surface it is added to soil to reduce the odor now next one is classification of lime lime is classified into four types first is fat lime second is poor lime third is hydraulic lime and fourth is dolomite lime now first type of lime is Fat lime. Fat lime, it is also known as high calcium lime. It contains calcium hydroxide which is derived by slacking. Properties of fat lime are it slacks vigorously, harden very slowly, it is more expensive, it has high degree of plasticity, it has large sand carrying capacity and it is perfectly white in color. Uses of fat lime are it is used in glass industry and chemical industry for whitewash and plastering of walls, for water softening process, for joint in brickwork and stonework. Now next is poor lime. It is also known as lean lime. Its composition is calcium oxide 75% and clay 25%. Properties, it is cheap, it slacks slowly, it makes poor motor, it is muddy white in color and it has low sand carrying capacity. It is used in white wash and in motor. Now next type of lime is hydraulic lime. Its composition is calcium oxide 70 to 80 percent, clay 5 to 20 percent. Properties, it do not slack easily, it does not shrink or crack. It has small sand carrying capacity and it is used in marine work instead of cement for foundation of tall chimneys and thick walls. Hydraulic lime is again classified into three types. First one is feebly hydraulic lime, second one is moderately hydraulic lime and third is eminently hydraulic lime depending upon the percentage of clay that is percentage of silica and alumina present in it. First is feebly hydraulic lime. It slacks very slowly that is within 50 to 60 minutes. It set in 2 to 3 weeks. It makes good and strong mortar. It is used for ordinary masonry work. Then moderately hydraulic lime. It slacks within 1 to 2 hours. It sets in 1 week and form stronger mortar than feebly hydraulic lime. It is used for mortar, brick work and superior masonry work. Now third type of lime is eminently hydraulic lime. It slacks with great difficulty. It is like Portland cement and it forms strong mortar. It is uses 
it is used as a substitute of cement for foundation of work under water now fourth type of lime is dolomite lime composition of dolomite lime is it contain calcium oxide 60 to 70 percent magnesium oxide 30 to 60 percent and small percentage of clay properties of dolomite lime it is too expensive it slacks very slowly it has low sand carrying capacity and it produce stronger mortar which is plastic instead it is used as flux in metallurgy then it is also used for preparing special slags last use is in manufacturing of basic refractories now let us see refractories refractories these are the material which withstand at high temperature that is above 1000 degree celsius there are three types of refractories depending upon the chemical behavior first is acidic second is basic and third is neutral acidic refractories these are not affected by acidic material for example fire clay silica quartz basic refractories these are not affected by basic material these contain calcium oxide and magnesium oxide example of basic refractories are dolomite and chromium then neutral refractories these are not affected by acidic or basic material for example alumina brick bauxite chromite zirconia and graphite properties of refractories are first is it withstand at high temperature it should have low thermal expansion and contraction it should have low thermal conductivity low porosity and under load only 10% deformation in next video we will discuss about second chapter of applied chemistry that is water treatment thank you